Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for November 30th, 2018. This is episode 83. And today we're going to talk about thoughts on Microsoft Flow license changes. So you may have run into this blog post from Chris McNulty, who works for Microsoft and is uh, well known in the SharePoint circles and Office 365. And so this was a, a blog post that he put out this past week. Not quite sure why we haven't seen something from the, the Flow team, but uh, I will assume because it did come from a Microsoft source that this is accurate. And so naturally some people are upset uh, about some of the changes that are coming. And you know, more specifically, the changes show up in this specific section here. So as of February 1st, 2019, the following capabilities will only be available in Power Apps and Flow P1 and P2 plans. So the creation and publication of custom connectors in Power Apps and Flow, HTTP custom actions integrated into Flow outside of the SharePoint and OneDrive connector. So you may have noticed, uh, especially if you do a lot of SharePoint within the last probably six months, there was a SharePoint plus HTTP connector or HTTP plus SharePoint connector show up. And what this did is this really filled some gaps from an operation or action perspective that weren't in the existing out of box connectors. So what this allowed people to do was to basically provide a path for the API that they're interested in calling and using this action flow or Microsoft would take care of wiring up the authentication, which is obviously um, can be a challenge if you're trying to do that yourself. But uh, this was, you know, a capability that was included in, in that connector itself. And then in addition, there was also the integration of on-premises data through the on-premises data gateway. So that's another sort of fairly advanced scenario. And that's also um, included in this new licensing terms, which requires a P1 or P2 plan. Now for customers that have active users of these features, they'll get an automatic extension until January 31st, 2020, or the expiration of their Office 365 subscription. So these uh, do not have an immediate impact, um, but still it's, it's naturally, it's, it's change. And uh, there's a lot of people not super pumped about some of these changes um, as found on Twitter. So I thought I would provide my thoughts on the changes. And so naturally change is, is always hard to accept. And I think, you know, having lived through the previous Power BI license changes, these sort of changes are never really welcome from a customer perspective. Now, it is naturally pretty tough when you do have new services that are really breaking ground and in some senses really disrupting sort of existing tools, existing markets and changing the way people work. Um, you know, these, these things are bound to happen. So I'm not necessarily condoning it, but um, you know, having some insight into the team, having been on the team, uh, certainly I can appreciate some of the things that they're going through and and why they are moving in this direction. Uh, the second bullet point may seem odd, but it is, it is kind of true. Uh, for some organizations, this is a blessing. Uh, from a governance perspective, uh, some customers aren't super pumped about HTTP as they feel it provides a lot of power uh, to end users, and it allows you to call APIs that could otherwise not be governed. Uh, so for example, let's say you try to block Dropbox and you can create DLP policies that help prohibit that. And you could even arguably create like firewall rules so that if you're on the network and you're trying to establish a connection to say Dropbox that could get, um, could get blocked. But what if you had the ability to use HTTP and use um, basically call the, the native Dropbox API? You could essentially do that by using HTTP. So obviously, you know, a developer who's got these skills has many different options when it comes to calling those services. So it's, it's not fair to paint flow in, in a bad light from that perspective. But by having HTTP behind a paywall, it actually prevents some users from actually, you know, doing things like that. 
And so I think for, for some organizations who you know have had some concerns with HTTP, this actually might be a blessing by having it behind a paywall, which will restrict sort of who has the access or the ability to use this connector. And naturally, you're going to license the people that really do need this. So it does become a value proposition, which we'll talk about here shortly. Um, HTTP is an advanced feature. I've kind of alluded to that already. Most users, this isn't really going to have an impact. I think naturally, there's the office connectors are, are rather popular. And HTTP for most users isn't really achievable for them or, or something that they're going to embark on. I would say the custom connectors would be similar uh, for many users, obviously more advanced users, sort of developer focused, they're naturally going to be able to use these. And um, also the on-premise data gateway is another area where it can provide some contention for organizations and perhaps having it behind a paywall is actually a good thing as well. Uh, so this in some ways does give organizations more control. And for those who still want to use it, they still can. And that gets to my next point around focusing on value. Naturally, when you have something and now you have to pay for that same something, it's going to rub some people the wrong way. But what I would argue is, you know, focus on the value. Are you getting value out of using custom connectors, using the on-premise data gateway? using HTTP, I would encourage you to go and do the math and go ahead and figure out what is the ROI on those processes where you've used these different components or capabilities. And then I would go ahead and figure out how much this is going to cost you, $5 per month. And maybe there's going to be multiple users, maybe not. I think it depends on how you've got things configured, but use this objectively. I think in organizations and, and working for an enterprise right now, there's obviously a lot of spend on software and services. And people do that because they are expecting value in return. And certainly this should be no different. Like for me, I, I'm not too fussed about having to pay $5 per user per month to take, these, take advantage of these advanced features. And the reason for that is I'm very confident I can go ahead and extract out $5, $10, $15, even $20 of value for each of those $5 licenses. And if you can't do that, then to be honest, like Flow probably isn't the tool for you. And I think for most organizations that have thresholds on ROI, like for example, it could be we expect, you know, at least 2x value within two years. And I really struggle to think that a person in an enterprise that's using Flow could not extract that times of type of value. You could probably go ahead and extract out 20X, 30X, even 50X worth of value. So $5 a month is, is not a lot of money. And you know if it is, then I really question if it flows the right tool for you because it is capable of so much and there's not a lot of costs related to that. You know, So that's probably a bit of a contentious issue for, for some listeners, but you know, just my experience on the enterprise and dealing with other enterprise tools, flow is still a ridiculous bargain, even if you're paying $5 per user per month. And hey, I'll even open this up. If you are having trouble extracting, you know, $5 of value for that, reach out to me. I will help you identify use cases where you can do so. Now, lastly, so obviously you have options and you have time. So if you're an existing consumer of these different components, you have more than a year to make some transitions. And so you, you do have options. You, there's, there's no one forcing you to use Flow. Um, obviously, like I would endorse it. I think it's a good tool. But you might look at this and say, hey, Logic Apps might be cheaper in this scenario. And that could be an option for you. Um, but on the flip side, you might say, hey, no, I need to use approvals. And I want to take advantage of some of the um, integrated experiences in Office 365 and say, you know what, this $5 per user per month really isn't a big deal. And it's something we're going to absorb because we are returning much more value to the business. But bottom line is you do have options, you do have time, and you have the ability to make that informed decision and choose what path is, is best for you. So I'm going to sign off with that, looking for certainly more information to be available in the coming days or, or weeks uh, from Microsoft on this front. But I think the, the key takeaway from all of this, 
focus on value, do the ROI, and uh, see if you still feel the same way. Um, you know, naturally, people aren't happy with change. I get that. I've been there before. It's not fun. It's not fun going back to, you know, your boss or your customer. Um, but, you know, I really urge you to focus on value, do the ROI calculations, figure out the benefit by automating. And whenever you're automating, you're usually offsetting labor. And those are the easiest ways to prove your ROI. So I'd encourage you to take a look at it from that perspective. So that's it for this edition of Middleware Friday. I want to thank Biztalk360 for being a partner of the team. Uh, take care and have a good weekend. Thank you.